Welcome, Lightsport Aircraft fans. Stick with me for just the next three and a half minutes and I'll tell you everything you need to know about burping your baby. The baby with the Rotax 912 series aircraft engine in its belly. To get started, I'll need you to step a little bit closer and put your ear down near the top of this oil tank. There's the burp we're talking about, also known as a gurgle or murmur. All right, now let's examine what's going on when your baby burps. What's happening is when you turn the propeller in the direction of travel, you're moving any remaining oil that's down here in the bottom of the engine in the dry sump back up the return line to the tank. Once that oil is transferred back up, the only thing that can be then transferred is air and that's the burp or gurgle or murmur that you hear. Okay, with those preliminaries out of the way, now we can take a look at the three reasons for burping your Rotax 912 series aircraft engine. Number one, you want to be sure that all of the oil has been moved out of that dry sump and it's up there in the oil tank ready to go when you fire the engine up. Number two, burping the engine and filling that oil tank up is the way that you check the oil. And number three, the reason for burping, is by turning the propeller, you're going to get your first feel of the engine uh, before that day's flight. Throughout this video, when I speak of one prop pull, I'm speaking of pulling one blade of a three-bladed prop through one pull which is about 120 degrees. Pulling the prop in the direction of travel is what causes the engine to burp. The first thing you need to do is ensure you have a procedure established so that you never ever pull the prop in the wrong direction, which can result in serious engine damage. Now, there's two schools of thought on how the prop should be pulled. One says you pull it slowly, until you find some compression and then you stop for one to three seconds let the air push up and then you continue until you find some more compression pause let it pump and continue the other school of thought which i subscribe to is that throughout the propping process you turn it slowly and steadily. Which school of thought is correct? They're both correct. They'll both result in burping of the engine. However, I strongly prefer the second method, which is a slow, steady pull. Okay, so the aircraft engine has sat overnight. The oil temperature is at or near ambient air temperature, and you're ready to check the oil before the first flight of the day. Remove the oil cap from the tank, remove the dipstick, wipe it dry, set it aside, and then you're ready to prop the engine. And as I said before, I use the slow, steady turning process. Now, I don't know if you picked that up, but it already burped. That's the first two pulls of the morning. And ideally, what you're looking for is an engine that does burp in between two and uh, ten prop pulls. But believe me, when I first got my airplane 16 months ago and began this process, that was definitely not the case. So I went on a mission to find out what was going on and what the secrets were to quick and efficient burping of the engine. And I'm going to reveal those in uh, just a moment. Right, join me on my soapbox here for a few words about when to check the engine oil. Now I hear some pilots and owners saying, well, I always check the oil after the engine's hot, after I've flown the airplane. My question would be, why would you do this when oil expands in volume by 5% or more when it's hot? In fact, the word hot uh, can mean a wide range of temperatures depending on how hot the air was that you've just flown in and how long after you shut down you actually check the oil level on the dipstick. I believe it's much preferable 
to check the engine oil before the first flight of the day, preferably in the morning. This is the time when the oil is going to be most likely to be at or near ambient air temperature. That means it's the same temperature or close to it as the outside air. Now this results in less variability in volume and therefore a better chance for you to pick up a small change in level on that dipstick. So, check the oil before the first flight of the day at ambient air temperature, preferably in the morning. Okay, flight fans, we're almost to that all-important bottom line. The secrets to burping your baby. But before we get there, there's three caveats you need to know about that may affect how well these secrets work in your particular situation. The first caveat is the height of this oil tank in relation to the engine oil thump. The higher the tank is, the harder it can be to burp. Uh, caveat number two is the length and the number of twists and turns in this oil return line. The longer it is, the more twisty it is, the harder it's going to be to burp the engine. Not too much you can do about that. And the final caveat is low temperatures. Especially low temperatures are going to make the engine hard to burp. All right, flight fans, let's look at the uh, four secrets for quick and efficient burping. As gleaned from a thorough review of the literature, both written and other existing videos, and from propping my baby here, for more than 250 first flights of the day. Secret number one. Be sure that you're using this little baby right here. The new and improved Genuine Rotex engine oil filter. Comes in a white box, part number 825012. This filter has design changes which uh, restrict and reduce engine oil backflow and this in turn makes the engine easier and quicker to burp. Secret number two, clean engine oil. I've discovered that as the engine oil ages and begins to change color and viscosity at around 32 and a half hours, the engine gets harder to burp. And so uh, that 32 and a half is the milestone I've set for oil changes on my engine, knowing that going longer than that, it's going to take me more prop pulls to burp the engine. Secret number three is to pre-burp the engine. This can be done in two ways. One form of pre-burping is after the last flight of the day, 15 or 20 minutes later, you burp the engine. This may take 10 or 20 pulls, but you'll find that it greatly diminishes the number of pulls needed for burping the following morning. The second form of pre-burping is if you're not going to use the airplane for an extended period of time. Try to get to the airport or wherever the plane is stored and burp it every day. Again, this reduces burping uh, when you're getting ready to finally make a flight. And the last thing, the last secret is to uh, consider applying and using some form of heat to keep the engine oil temperature up to a minimum, minimum of 55 or 60 degrees if you're flying and using your plane in a very cold environment. So those are the four secrets to quick and efficient burping of your Rotax Series 912 aircraft engine. Happy flying and see you next time.